So a few weeks ago, we shared the story of a family in Bangor with strong memories of the time President Jimmy Carter stayed overnight at their home. But at least one other main family also has an especially personal story to share about President Carter. As 207's Don Kerrigan tells us, the family of former Maine Senator and Secretary of State Ed Muskie says the Senator and the President developed a friendship that transcended politics. Call for withdrawal of foreign troops from South Vietnam. After Senator Ed Muskie had run for vice president and four years later for president, he may have thought his political career would go no higher. But then he became friends with Jimmy Carter. And I had had Ed Muskie, you know, at the top of my list for as, as a person of superb leadership qualities and, and na national, even international esteem. He invited Dad to stay at the governor's mansion in Atlanta, and they got to know each other. Ned Muskie, the youngest of Ed and Jane Muskie's five children, shared the story of his father's first meeting with Carter in Georgia, where he says the Maine senator made an impression. One thing that I remember uh, was that he arrived, my father arrived at the governor's mansion after a long day, and uh, the president asked him if he'd like a drink before he went to bed. And my father asked for a whiskey and milk. And you can imagine he tells the story better, but he was amused by that. They had other interactions after, and when Carter ran for president in 1976, Ed Muskie, still one of the Senate's leading Democrats, ended up on Carter's short list of choices for vice president. Carter invited three people down to Plains, Georgia, to spend time with Rosalind and him. And they were uh, John Glenn, Walter Mondale, and my father. Following the questions for Senator But Mondale, Carter ended up choosing Mondale, not Muskie, as his running mate. And then, in 1980, during the Iran hostage crisis, Carter needed a new Secretary of State. He turned to Ed Muskie. I called him on the phone first, and I didn't beat around the bush. It was just not my nature to, to equivocate, so I told him what I had in mind. And uh, he was taken aback, and he was quite surprised. I must say that instantly, I was attracted to it. There was never any doubt in my mind. Washington moved quickly to make it happen. I think the president has chosen very wise. Muskie was Secretary of State for just eight months, but it was a memorable time for his family. And it gave 18-year-old Ned his own chance to get to know Jimmy Carter. I will never forget it. It was my senior year in high school. When his parents were invited to stay with the president at Camp David, and Ned was taken by Secret Service to join them. When we arrived, the agent knocked on the Carter's cabin door, and the Carters opened the door, and with their uh, Georgia accents, wel welcomed me to Camp David. Ned says he and Carter went running and played tennis together and talked. It gave him an up-close impression of the president that has remained with him ever since. Jimmy Carter is just a normal man. Uh, he was just asking this 18-year-old about his life. He says the friendship continued after the two men left office. The highlight, perhaps, when Bates College opened the Muskie Archives. Uh, Carter came up to Bates College when the Muskie Archives were created. Um, and that was a great, you know, it was a great sign of friendship and respect that he did that. For Ned Muskie, they are all treasured memories of his father and his president. Carter has proven, we all know this now, uh, to be a great man and a great human being. Um, and I remember back then very vividly people uh, saying to my father, uh, despite only being a one-term president, he will go down in history very well. And I think that's uh, a surety at this point. Two leaders following different pathways to power whose lives and families became forever connected.
And Ned Muskie says at his father's funeral, Jimmy Carter said Ed Muskie was the greatest man who never became president.